writers are always warriors. They're going against the uh, mainstream complacency, mainstream assumptions. It's identifying the sources of conflict, whether it's within an individual psyche or communal identity or national identity in this age of globalism and transnationalism when everyone is, you know, masses of people are moving across borders. So what does it mean to be a Norwegian if, you, if your father started out, let's say, in Ethiopia? Uh, what does it mean for me to be an American when um, I was brought up the, uh, in my formative years in a very traditional patriarchal Hindu family. And um, I don't know if I mentioned this last night, my uh, husband is an American of French-Canadian and English-Canadian origin, with a little bit of Dutch and a little bit of Scots mixed in. Our two sons are therefore 50% Bengali Brahmin Hindu, and 25% French-Canadian, 25% Anglo-Canadian with all these European mixes. And my older son married a German-American and Irish-American Catholic girl from um, Chicago. And they have adopted my only grandchildren, our two little daughters, granddaughters, adopted from China. <laughs> and that's the new America. It's going to be very hard to think of national identity, whether it's in Europe or in North America, in the old ways when you know, everyone looked alike, belonged to the same race and ethnicity and uh, religion. Yeah. And how can, how can literature contribute to, to peace building? by mobilizing shame, empathy, and touching the hearts of individual readers. You know, there are two kinds of uh, writers. Uh, those who make you feel comfortable about your basic assumptions and those who challenge you or provoke you into thinking in a different way. Every town should have, you know, let's say, a book that everybody reads yeah, through the library so that there are discussions. I, do, I don't mind if it's even romance uh, novel that they're reading, but just getting into the habit of an imaginary, inhabiting an imaginary world.